Hi, my name is Kevin and I blog at theory.istereason.com. Today, I just, not say today, but actually earlier this week, I received my um, issue of Mind Magazine. And if you're not familiar with Mind Magazine, it's an experimental five-issue magazine um, from Time Warner. And basically, what they're trying to do is to let you personalize your magazines. You will get to pick from a a bunch of magazines uh, that Time Warner owns. This includes, uh, following here, you can actually see, uh, Travel and Leisure, Golf Magazine, Sports Illustrated, Time, Money, InStyle, Food and Wine, and Real Simple. So what I did was I simply went to the website, okay, and I got news about this through Twitter. So thanks to Jessica from Buffalo PRSA and uh, I know some journalists who are interested to find out more about this uh, you go to this website and the address is at http slash slash www.timecmg.com slash mine and on this page you put in your credentials um, then you can drag in ma those magazines that I mentioned into those five slots that you see on the right hand side over there you just drag them down you pick the magazines you want and it'll be mashed up together into a 36 page magazine that you get over the course of 10 weeks. Uh, in that little uh, uh, form, there's actually a part at the bottom where you actually get to, you know, there's a little like personality test, like it asks you questions on what do you prefer to eat, whether it's sushi or pizza, uh, who do you prefer to have dinner with, whether it's like uh, Leonardo uh, da Vinci or Socrates. So I take it that this is sort of a way in which they, they would um, figure out what kind of articles would appeal to you. Uh, that's pretty interesting because you're not consciously picking the sections of each magazine into this magazine. In fact, I've no idea, you know, I, I don't really read Sports Illustrated or, or Travel and Leisure, but I drag those in anyway. And uh, I have no idea what kinds of sections would appear in here. So it's only when I get it that I, I finally see what it is. So it's... I'll tell you what I think about it in a while, but first, I think I'll show you what um, what the magazine actually kind of looks like and what's so special about it. Uh, the thing is that because of the way you can personalize, personalize this magazine, you end up with up to 56 different combinations of articles or, or of magazine ca that can possibly appear. Uh, many people uh, online have already kind of liken this to the idea of how it's like a printed version of uh, RSS feed where you can mash up all kinds of feeds together. Um, now this is free for the first 31,000 respondents after which the next 200,000 would only get access to the online version which isn't so exciting of course. Why do I say that? Why do I say it's less exciting? Well the point is this, we get this in print right okay and it's clearly sponsored by Lexus okay uh, and this ad actually plays a very important role. There are like four or five pages of their ads, but that's about it. There's no other ads in there. And you turn it around, for instance, you see some of the personalization happening already. Like for the new, all new 2010 RX Lexus, you've got now with more Kevin Lim in there. The point is that they're trying to sell this car in such a way that it appeals to someone like me. If I go in deeper, there's even more customizations. Like for example, they somehow know that, I don't know if this is for everyone, but they somehow know that I'm into heads-up displays. So they kind of mentioned that in the ad. Then if I flip some more, there's another cool geocentric one where it says, talks about navigation system. It's how, it's how it's easy to locate the best spa resorts near Williamsville. Not that I go to spar, so it's kind of weird, but at least it knows that I live in Williamsville based on my address. So there's subtle kinds of, uh, you know, personalization to it. Now, mind you, this sort of magazine print personalization aspect might be novel for many, but it's not entirely new. Back in July 2007, Wyatt Magazine joined forces with Xerox Print to demonstrate customized printing. What uh, Wyatt did was have a web page where people could submit photographs of themselves, which would then somehow, I think, go into the cover of the magazine, and everyone who received it would receive personalized you know, uh, Wyatt magazine covers with their photo on it. Now, I think it was only open to the first 5,000 people, 
Uh, so this is a much bigger venture because it's the first 31,000 people. Okay, now, so they have my magazines in here and I received the email just like some of you uh, who receive your My Magazine about how they goofed up that these selections weren't really our selections, there was a computer glitch and so it's all the same for everybody but they're, they're, they promised to kind of fix this for the next few issues. In any case, um, that's why it's going to be a little bit hard to judge but you know you get articles from all the different magazines that I might have picked okay and the paper is good you know it's, it's like magazine paper but it feels very thin I mean I know maybe it's the safe paper and true enough if you do combine only the best your favorite articles together in one magazine you would essentially save paper save print and the cost of customized printing has gone down to a point where you know it's almost negligible I think so it might be a real cost saver in the long run so all these articles, you know, I'm a guy and I, you know, some of these articles might appeal to me. Um, I don't really have kids, so I don't know if this makes sense to me, like, to get your kids moving. But still, you know, maybe it's because of the goof up in the beginning. So it's kind of hard, hard to judge. I have to look at issue two and see if it's really, really customized to my uh, preferences and all that. So I've got, you know, an article here on searching for the perfect fit um, for jeans. And this is style and this is from InStyle magazine. I guess it's mostly for women, but uh, I think it's also open to a male interpretation, I guess. And some fashion stuff. So it's kind of weird. It's like you've got a bit of, you know, a bit of this and that. And then you've got a bit of like fashion and gossip, I think, or Marc Jacobs stuff here. Um, it's, it's all over. Then there's Sports Illustrated. Okay. You know, are you like me? I bet you are. I bet you hate soccer. Blah 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 blah. Talks about soccer. Oh, you can see that. Okay. Anyway, so there's all this personalization. Then there's another ad here again on the back page. Talks about there the Williamsville thing again. Okay. And uh, I wanted Time Magazine, but I don't know if I got it. It says page 17. Yeah. So. So it's got all these articles in here, okay, a bunch of it. Now the thing is this, uh, personalization. Once again, I don't know if this is what it's supposed to be like because they said that there was a glitch. Uh, I'll be interested to look at issue number two to see if it's really customized to what I, what it's more like me, you know. Um, but it feels... And this sentiment has been shared on Twitter as well, as in I've done a little searching and I found that a few people found it quite, um, they're not used to it. The idea that this magazine's so thin, that it's supposed to be stuff that they like, uh, it feels more like a Frankenstein magazine of some sort. Because when it comes to a mashup, I think it's one thing to just put together all kinds of different random preferences or things that you like together and it's another thing to actually have these these uh, articles make sense with one another in a more congruent sense in a more granular sense there seems to be no relationship between the articles at all I, I don't know if I'm nitpicking at it but I think when I think of um, a mashup I think of something that's more uh, that is that has more fluidity to it you know, this feels more like a sampler where all kinds of things that I might like are put together. So, you tell me, I don't know, you know, you've got all these articles in here, some appeal, some don't. Um, I just don't buy it yet. I hope that uh, perhaps, perhaps A, I would have to be able to have more precision as to pick the kinds of sections in each ma magazine that I prefer to have in here rather than to have the system try and guess what I want because I have no idea what kind of articles to expect. It's kind of weird. Like when I buy white magazines, I'm familiar with the sections and all that and I look forward to specific ones more than the other. Uh, but in this case, it's, it's, it seems like all over the place. It seems like I'm reading someone else's RSS feed and it's not mine yet. I, 
we just have to see. So, in terms of saving paper, I guess it does. If uh, if I read at least three of these magazines, uh, perhaps on a more regular basis, perhaps they, this might actually save on a long run if I offered to say, yeah, combine all three of my favorite magazines together, strip out the ads, you know, put less ads in there, maybe take away some uh, sections that I don't really like anyway, then, you know, to that extent, yeah. I think what this magazine is trying to do is to do a bit of recommendation, to a bit of like a recommendation engine based on your preferences, but I think they could go the other way as well and have it more manual and have people actually state like what they actually want specifically and just print those parts rather than to make uh, make it all guesswork you know so good attempt but the question remains is this I'm trying to get this thing to show up is this the future of magazines not yet but it's a stepping stone uh, it's exciting people are talking about it is it good PR I don't yeah I guess for the for the car but I'm never gonna be able to afford this so I don't know maybe they should look at my income bracket and figure out a car that you know that will fit me I can't afford that so this is cool though this is something that I can afford it's free all right so but keep up the great work time magazine I think this is a positive step forward in this time of recession people talking about death of publication death of newspapers and all that it's very important that we try new things uh, I don't believe that just be because we're talking about publications that there's more costs involved web online publication when taken seriously especially when we do investigative journalism or high production work like some of the articles in here a lot of high visuals and you know, uh, writing value in there still costs a lot of money. I mean, you have to pay people to do these sort of things. And that's where the bulk of the cost is. It isn't in the production anymore. doesn't mean that you run a website. means it's cheap. My blog, I don't really update that often. I'm really paying hundreds a year just to keep it going. You know, there's, there's always costs involved. So I don't buy the death of newspaper thing just because it's print. I think um, there's more to it. And we just have to figure out where the balance lies. All right, so this is Kevin signing off. It's been 12 minutes already. I think that's pretty long. Uh, go to the website once again if you want to get your own copy. This is uh, timecmg.com slash mine. Uh, if you can't get a print, at least try out the online version and see if it really fits you. See whether the system's intelligent enough. Um, and, and have a taste of the future because... Who knows? Your newspaper might just be one piece of paper next time. All right.